Hello and welcome to No Rest for the Weekend, where we go behind the scenes and talk to the creators of independent entertainment. I'm Jason Godby, and with me in the Rabbit Hole studio today, he is an Emmy award-winning producer and the co-founder of Footprint.tv, Mr. Frank Fernandez. Welcome, Frank. Hello. Nice to be here. Nice to have you, man. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for schlepping to Brooklyn. We always appreciate it when people come down. Uh, So you've got quite a background. And we'd probably need like three or four shows to cover your history in, in television and so forth. But uh, for just to familiarize, because we had uh, Robin Adams, who is your co-founder of Footprint, on the show, and we learned about him. And so, but just to kind of familiarize people with you before we get into questions on producing and and questions about Footprint, just tell us a little bit about you. Like, how did you get into this, and uh, what is your origin story, so to speak? I originally started out as thinking that I was going to be an educator. Um, and the only job I could find was in the, I grew up in Long Island, so Rockville Center. So I was working for the Rockville Center Recreation Department. So I was basically teaching kids how to play soccer. Anyway, so I couldn't find a job. So um, sitting at a bar late one night, guy I played baseball with in high school came in and uh, he offered me a job. He said, hey, what are you doing? I'm saying pretty much nothing. And he goes, you want to work on a, you know, you want to go to work on a set I'm looking for PAs for a film. So I'm like, I didn't know anything about film. I didn't know even what a production assistant did or was going to do. So I said, all right. It was like 3 in the morning. I went home, showered, met him back at the, at the train station, Long Island Railroad, 4 in the morning. And that's where my media career took off, and I started from there. You literally started from the bottom. Like, uh, you started as a production assistant, sort of the lowest, lowest man on the totem pole. Yep. Um, were you? But were you like a big like movie fan or like you I was a big movie fan yes okay. uh, um, I so was you had totally, like a passion for it it wasn't I had a like, passion yeah. for television I mean I all throughout college and even high school and growing up I grew up in those you know the wacky CBS comedies Green Acres Hee Haw that the whole the, all that stuff and uh I love Lucy like everybody else. And, uh, you know, I loved uh, Desi Arnaz and, you know, um, and Lucio Ball, Desi Lou. So I always had a passion and kind of like, but I looked at it as a hobby. It was never, you know, like I was one of those, as a kid, I was one of those kids that stayed up late, snuck out just to watch old westerns. Give us a little bit um, of your resume in terms of, because you spent um, 20 odd years at NBC? 28. And what types of shows were you, were you working on? Well, I worked on all sorts. I mean, late night, prime time. Um, I was one of the first, uh, I produced the first digital music show for NBC uh, called The Scene at Gibson. Um, didn't bat- last very long, but uh, you know, but that showed me, you know, that was a, was a great, unique thing. I produced uh, three albums for the Today Show concert series, so I got to, you know, dabble in music, which was kind of hard. I was, you know, one of the original uh, uh, production folks in at NBC Records when it launched. Um, so I got to do a lot of things. I mean, uh, sort of like I found my niche by not finding my niche. But again, I started from the ground up, so I really knew the ins and ends, the odds and ends, and how, as the old guys used to talk, always learn how the wires connected on both ends. So that's how I went through NBC and life, really, in the media business. I've always tried to understand how the, each wire is connected. There's a beginning and an end and in the middle. So once you know, knowledge is power. Stick yeah, and, around. and that's how you get work in this job because they yeah. they will hire the guy who knows things. They will hire the guy who's like, oh, you can do this, this, and this. Well, you know, let me make you an editor on this project, and let me make you a producer on this project. Uh, and that's even happening more but and I more always, now. You know, my you whole know. intent was like Desi Arnaz. Um, I, I wanted to work for myself. You know, I mean, I wanted to be the entrepreneur. I wanted to um, I wanted to look, listen, and learn. But I'm Cuban after all, and we're raised to own. <laughs> So, um, you know, that's the mindset. And, uh, you know, so I had every intention of, you know, I, I guess I stayed way too long at NBC, but I'm glad I did. It was a, it was a wonderful 28 years. And you, you were able to work because you were sort of like this utility infielder. You were able to work on stuff like sports and also uh, fictional narrative sitcoms. Well, I and, started in sports. Yeah. I dabbled some in entertainment, but, you know, that's back in the day when, uh, you know, uh, there was no yes. It was MSG where the Yankee games were. Mm-hmm. And then they did uh, Sports Channel. So I worked for the Mets, which was my team. So that, you know, I... I thought I had already 
reach a pinnacle just by being at Shea Stadium and right. you know in the booth of Ralph Kiner and Tim McCarver, you know, having them, watching them smoke cigars there and just talk about the old days of baseball. It was wonderful. So I spent a, a, a good portion with them. And then I started at the racetrack. When I graduated, um, I was subbing for a guy who I had met at Sports Channel himself, and he was working seven days a week as the racetrack season in New York and Belmont. So I subbed for him, and then I started producing graphic packages for you know, TVG, um, which is still around. And uh, so I learned horse racing, and I worked for a wonderful man named uh, Harvey Pack, who showed me more about television, even though he was not a television guy. He was a car, uh, <clears throat> commentator, uh, NBC chosen for the first uh, Breeders' Cup, and he took me along, and, you know, some kid, you know, green as I was, and uh, I was fortunate enough, and we went to Santa Anita for the very first uh, Breeders' Cup, and from there I just uh, segue into the operations, and so um, I worked at sports for a bit, um, and then I got a full-time, I was offered a full-time job in the operations and scheduling, and uh, I took it, and I ended up scheduling just about every individual at NBC, every facet of scheduling and operations. I learned, I was there for about, I don't know, five years, and then I got into the entertainment business from there um, as a scheduling coordinator, so I scheduled the, the promos. Um, and and you, you were saying before, like, this is the work that not a lot of people want to do. No, no. Because um, it's not fun. It's not creative. You know? No, and you work with creative people, but it's not creative. But, you yeah. under, but it was a valuable lesson because I understood, again, how the wires were connected, A and B. Once I understood where, how NBC worked, I was able to maneuver at NBC in a place where it's very hard to maneuver because you're always pigeonholed. Um, so I never stayed in one job long enough to be pigeonholed. I kept reinventing myself. And because I reinvented myself, opportunities were arising. And, and, you know, let's face it. I mean, I always wanted to work at NBC. I mean, I didn't know it at the time. It was a dream come true for me. Sure. So once I had that dream, it's like, you know, when you – it's the best example is, you know, when you become a producer, there is no other step. You're a producer. <laughs> Uh, that's it. You, that's the ceiling. Where You're, are you going to go from where that? Where are you going to yeah, go? Exactly. I mean, so you go show to show to show. Right. Um, you know, and if, me, you, if you can do, like, if you can do one show, then, well, he's suited for this, so he can do this show. If you're good enough, you know, yeah. I mean, you're good enough. The, 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 the pinnacle of producing is uh, clearly, you know, creating and you know, creating, developing, and producing your own Right. Did creation. you ever get to do that? I've always done that. Yeah, Footprint is the first example. Uh, um, you know, Cena Gibson was... Uh, was a collaboration, um, but it was a lot of my vision. Um, and, uh, you know, and I got into, you know, I got into promos, and, and I advise everybody, that's the quick, you know how catcher is the quickest way to the major leagues, they say? Really? Okay. Yes. Well, advertising and promotion at a network is the quickest way to the major leagues because in production because you learn so much from writing to producing and creating a five-second, 10, 15, 20-second spot. So that's an art in itself. You, now, when you say promotion... Um, Advertising, so, like a promo. You see promos on cable. So the people that run promos for the network, not the promos yes. that the, the network buys, but the stuff that's done No, the networks like don't buy promos. The network creates promos. That's the only... That is the biggest way and the most targeted way that they get their audience. That's how you, that's how if you, you don't even realize it, like even Netflix has promos. Everybody has promos. Like a trailer is a promo. Right, right. Um, you know, the network's promos, well now it's different, but when I was there, it was, you know, you did, you did promos under the promo or advertising and promotion category. You had trailers came under that, opens, show opens, interstitials, ads. So you're doing all of the, that little connective tissue in between shows and you're... And yeah, you're, that's all considered you know, advertising and if promotion. If they want to move one show to, you know, like it was on Tuesdays, but now it's on Saturdays. That's, yep. all, that's a promo department. And you're kind of doing, to do that stuff, you got to be, a, an you're producing, but like producing means writing, directing, yeah. uh, all that stuff. Yeah, it's the one-man band. You know, you usually had a PA and stuff. How many, I mean, uh, for something like that, how many promos are you creating, uh, like in a given, say, a given... Uh, Production well, it's a whole day. It's a whole day. I mean, it's a whole, you know, you're doing one show. Basically, mm -hmm. you're assigned one show. Again, I, I don't know how it is now, but um, you were assigned one show, and then you created a different uh, promo for that one show. So, base, so we, you know, so we started with, like, you know, 
a 60 second and then we do cut downs right you know that that was my big break i got into that area and i learned so much about production and so quickly from there i started doing longer format from there so you kind of you were able to start with this smaller form because I feel like it's like short films like they're a great uh, starting ground or commercials because if you can tell a story in thirty seconds you can tell a story in an hour and a half exactly or an hour like exactly I mean you could tell I mean think about it it's think so of, hard to think do, about these to network, get a good story that think about way. these network promos I mean the other the other thing at the networks was the, the laughable thing was that we were the promo department was always counted as the filler so if a movie came in short. The promo department was expected to create something to fill the 60-minute void. Right. Because, you know, it's either 30 or 60. Everything's in blocks on a network. Yes, when, because advertising is sold that way. So right. they'll sell advertising. But if they can't, like some things are not sellable, if that's a word. Right. So, um, so they would depend on, you know, the promo department to come up and fill that 15 minutes or that and that's when, you know, we would fill it with, uh, you know, like a Conan segment right. from a previous show or something or just a, a Letterman at the time, too. Uh, and that, that's a whole – that's a great uh, method of storytelling, too, because you're trying to figure out well, what goes well with this particular show, the audience that I want to get to for this particular program that's going to be on. Yeah, we're talking you – know, you know, back then, NBC was wretched. It was like – that was pre-Friends. That was pre the Before the, uh, the must-see yeah, TV were, era. Yeah, the must-see TV. I was there for that. That was, uh, yeah. one, of my, that was one of my bosses who created must-see yeah. TV. So for Footprint, getting back to that, so you, 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 know, you spent a long time working in corporate TV. You spent a long time working for a network. And how did that – lead you to kind of forming your own OTT network? So, you know, a lot of the creative stuff we do, old school, it's created like, you know, in bars um, over napkins. Like we would go out, you know, again, I don't know how people do it, you know, do it now, but, you know, back in the day, you know, it's like we had offices, but we felt comfortable in a creative environment, whatever that was. So, you know, that would be usually have a drink. And we'd sit around and just talk about everything. And then all of a sudden, we'd zero in on the topic and then the creating. And then we'd just start dabbling on napkins. And, you know, and to this day, Robin, who you had on the show a couple months ago, um, you know, we're both old school that way. So we'll sit there and then, you know, we just start creating off napkins, you know, storyboarding. And then next thing you know, we're shooting. And... Uh, Footprint story is similar, but a little different. So I was in the Hamptons. Um, this is right after I had left uh, NBC for like the 30th time. Um, that was This was 2015, I want to say. So I'm sitting in the Hamptons at the beach with my you know, girlfriend and her, and her daughters at the time. And uh, they were walking on the shore picking up shells. And I was watching. You know, it was very early in the morning. I was watching them, the little girls jumping up and down on the sand with the imprint of their footprint. And, you know, then I reached out for, because you know, we were doing a picnic, so I reached out for a napkin, and then I started scribbling, like their feet, and I'm not a drawer whatsoever, but, you know, and then the X's and O's kind of thing. And then I'm like, they came back, and I said, you know, this is, this is, they're asking me, like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm coming up with something. Put your f imprint on the sand again. You know, they're five and six at the time. They were, they, it's like, oh, you're being silly. This, that's lame kind of thing. Right. So I wondered, I was like, this, and then the water started going over it. The ocean started going over the footprint. So it's like, wow, interesting. I got to do something with this. So, you know, you have a creative spark, mm -hmm. but you don't know where it's going and you don't right. know what it is. So, you know, I call Robin Adams. I'm like, I got this idea. And I don't know, you know, the girls tell me it's, lame but you know i can't get it out of my head it's a footprint imprinted in the sand with the water running out. and he goes the ocean has no boundaries um, and he goes that's really interesting let me call you back at noon he had the graphic for footprint oh cool tv no boundaries we spoke to robin a bit about footprint and kind of what it's about and uh, definitely check out that episode if you haven't seen it uh robin c adams episode uh he's another one of these guys with an extensive background in tv and he's kind of done it all uh like frank but um for for people who didn't see that episode what is footprint footprint's an, an ott network right yes. the way i like to describe it is it's like netflix for in the in the artists 
that's really what it is. Um, 30 plus channels, free entertainment. You can, you know, the app is free. Footprint uh, networks, uh, you can get anywhere. Um, and it, it, it really, what it is, is just it's an incubator for talent. We have, you know, everything from news, sports, well, not news, but um, lifestyle, you name it, we have it on the on, and, on footprint. And, uh, how are you guys now? Because uh, it's been a little while since I had Robin on the show, but what are you guys doing now for creators and how are you helping them kind of get their shows out there? And, and w- if I'm a creator looking to have a channel on footprint, uh, what's the advantage of that? Why, why am I doing that as a creator? First of all, it's distribution, and distribution's king no matter what you do in this business. Um, and, you know, we just don't green light everybody. Um, if you go on footprint.tv, you'll notice that there's a consistency to footprint.tv. It looks good and it sounds good. Um, we just don't green light any Tom, Dick, or Harry. Um, and, and what we look for is innovation, not only just uh, uh, in technology, but also in creating. Um, and, and again, it, 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 the subject matter really doesn't matter on Footprint. It could be a novella. It could be, you know, um, it could be a sports show. It could be a documentary. Um, it just has to be quality. It has to be quality. It yeah. has to be quality. It has to look good and sound great because, you know what, after all, it's, 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 our names are attached to this. So it's not like a Vimeo or a, a YouTube or something. It's not one of no. those kind of like where anybody can upload. So you're, you're actually no. greenlining shows. And then you guys also help people advertise their shows well, um, and we help have them a, get the word we have out, a so whole, to speak. We have a marketing agency. They're based out of uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, um, it's run by Um Indavo, thank you, Paul Ham, for supporting the dream. He's the CEO of Indavo Media. And um, they have a marketing agency which markets. Now, how Footprint works as a business is um, there's three ways. We, like, uh, I'll take Cafe Con Leche, for instance, a show I produce. Um, that Cafe Con Leche is basically David Chappelle meets The View. Okay. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's shot like a lot like Curb Your Enthusiasm where I'll come up with a topic. And Ashley North from Orange is the New Black is on it. And she's, um, thank God, she's, on, she's very creative, very talented. Um, she's one of the hosts. And uh, Willie Background, who I met on a Marvel set, is stand-up comedian and um, he's the other co-host. So Willie will, Willie's an example of what Footprint's all about. As Ashley is normal, I want to say, and the logical one, the straight person, Willie's out there, like crazy-ass comedy. He'll get, he'll come up with skits, and then he'll run it by me, and it's like, and then he'll shoot them. He'll shoot them himself. He'll direct them. He'll write them. Mm-hmm. And then he has a cast of thousands, usually like background artists, he'll meet on a set or what, whatever. And then he recreates and reenacts these little short story skits, like a lot like David Chappelle. Mm-hmm. And they could be anything. So we, Im- we will insert them in each episode. Then that episode of Café con Leche basically runs around that skit. Do you have guests on the show as well? Does she we interview people? We have guests on the show. It's a show that's shot a lot like our backgrounds. So, like, we can't guess because it's New York, and, and Hollywood guests are hard to get. So what we do is we'll wrap Café con Leche episodes around events, charities, around synergy with other networks okay on, other channels on footprint and we'll you know we'll 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 do episodes like for instance we just say yes for hope which is a uh charity by um susan lindley who is based out of uh houston texas i believe or dallas um it's about providing cancer treatment for those who can't afford it mm-hmm. so we're a big backer of that um and we will i will create an entire event around her charity so we'll do like an episode of Cafe con Leche and we do like a parody on the red carpet so we, we take it very serious about the cancer so our guests for that day and we come up with skits are cancer survivors okay so we'll have an entire well this this year we did three episodes of with Susan Lindley's group say yes for hope and um 
with cancer survivors, and we allow the cancer survivors, the episode is, is, is we allow the cancer survivors to be the content. So they tell their story. And Willie and Ashley uh, are very supportive, and Ashley's a big supporter of this charity. And um, they come on, and they tell their story, and then Willie will do a skit with them. On, you know, so it's very much live. So you have like a, a it's very free form. It sounds like very free form, very cool. And um, you know, they are the guests and they are the stars. And of this each is episode. one of the shows that you developed. Do you have other shows on the network as well? We have. Um, well, for the most part, Robin and I are very hands on particular channels, um, and we're definitely you know when call the arms when there's uh, channels that will ask us. Each show is a channel on Footprint. Okay. So when we have a channel, um, they're independently shot and produced for the most part. Uh, every once in a while, they'll have us come on board and help us produce an episode, like uh, Live It Up, Donna Drake show. That's a CBS show. Um, I produce uh, some segments for her and some episodes. Uh, uh, New York City Web Fest. Mm-hmm. Um, Lauren Atkins uh, channel uh, that's one of our newest ones uh, we produced uh, a good portion of the festival for her Robin and I again you know my specialty is live and, ba- and Robin's specialty is news right Right. so we combine our specialties together and we create you know a lot of what Footprint is all about um uh, uh, and even Paul Ham is involved in the NYC Web Fest. You know, I'm gonna, I'm hoping to have uh, Lauren on the show. Actually, it's at some point. She's uh, very, she's very funny. She's great. She's uh, a, she's I got to get going. I got to wrap up pretty soon. But uh, quickly, can you give me like if somebody wanted to do, if somebody's looking to produce content or somebody's looking to to make television. What advice would you give somebody looking to get either they're coming from the indie film world or there's someone like me who's who's currently looking for networks to pitch and, and create shows? What would you say is is the best like kind of ladder to get in that in that world? Look, there's no one way. Uh, first, let's just look at me. I mean, three in the morning. Who the hell would have thought that I was being in this business? Last thing I ever thought. I mean, I thought it was a hobby. So, I mean, there there's an example of just being in the right place at the right time. But then also making it work. So my advice is there is no one way without being crude or rude because that never works or a bull in a China, sh- in, in a China shop that, cause that never works. You need to understand that this is not show friends. This is show business. You need to understand the business of what you're getting into. And it's not the fun way or the most, you know, creative way, but you need to understand that you're getting into a business and, you know, and people are going to be ruthless and people are going to be, you know, harsh. It's, it's a hard world, um, media business. But if you understand the way it works and if you understand the business side of things, you will always win. Um, you know, knowledge is power, like everything else. I mean, the more you know about something, the more powerful you get to be. And how do you get that knowledge? Just by talking to people and networking sets, and so forth? Being on sets. You know what? I mean, never put down anything I hear all the time. People, ah, who wants to do background? You know what? Background is, I've done background. Um, being on a set gives you carte blanche to, to the greatest lesson. You're going to learn a lot in school, but you're not going to, but being in school is one thing, and being on a set is a totally different world. Um, you understand etiquette. You understand protocol. You understand, and everything is etiquette and protocol in television and filmmaking. It's the same thing. Um, different worlds, but yet the same. Um, so understand, you know, getting on a set, background, you do background, you get paid to, to learn. Um, advertising and promotion is another quick, quick way to understanding how the business works. I mean, you have to, you want to be creative, be in an ad, advertising and promotion. And when you ace that, move on to the next thing. That's how, I, you know, I, I told the story. I told you the story, you know. Yeah. I was started advertising and promotion. I mean, that's what how I got to be creative. And kind of be willing to to work your way up the ladder. I don't think that's I think that's kind of what's missing in the current generation is that will that like the eagerness to get your foot in a door and work your way up. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I feel like in I agree. I mean, and I th- also think everything's changing now. So the way you came up is is definitely different than the way people are going to come up now because television isn't television anymore. It's not what it used to be, um, and a lot of things with streaming. Um, and then like for someone like you with Footprint, 
you know, you can create your own show. But like it's, you know, when Robin was here, you just talked about like make it quality, you know, make make great picture, great sound, good content. Exactly. You know, and I agree with him 100 you know. percent. I mean, if you have to pass it litmus test, whether it's us and, I'm, you know, and, and you have to be humble and understand something that, you know what, you don't know everything and not everybody does. And, you know, just because, uh, you know, I'll be on a set and people are the, you know, it's a young generation and they look down on people that are older. And it's like, you know what? People that are older, I learned from the golden age of television. Those guys, you know, and, you know, I I thought they were full of it and all that. But then as I grew older, I am more mature and I realized, damn, what a lesson I learned. I learned more from those guys than I did in grad school. And, you know, and I and I majored in communications and television and, pro- and production. But there's nothing like the practical experience of actually seeing it and talking to people who have actually done it. Absolutely. You know, that's what and I at mean. At the that's, highest levels. Th- this is why I have this show. You know, because uh, I'm always learning as well, and I want people who know what they're talking about to be able to inform the audience. And from a practical perspective, not in theory, but in actual practice, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Theory is only going to get you so far. I mean, you need to be humble enough to get on a set, however you can get on a set. And then when you're on a set, look, look, listen, and learn, and don't talk. And and just because you learned something in school in a book doesn't mean you're ever going to use it Mm. in a production environment. And, you know, that's that's my advice. I mean, you just you got to be humility, that's humility and humble. And if it means getting a cup of coffee, but you're watching whomever direct an episode of whatever for a network that's millions of dollars, you get on that set because that because every experience is a learning experience. Absolutely. Uh, all right. I'm going to wrap up. But uh, if people want to find you, where can they find you on the Web? Footprint.tv. I mean, come down and join the app. Um, it's free. It's any, anywhere you want. Um, and, you know, I'm on Instagram. I'm, you know, Frank Fernandez, Frank J. Fernandez. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on everything. So uh, I'm going to wrap But Thanks for coming, man. I really thank appreciate you. it. It was a good talk. Um, and thank you all for taking this trip down the rabbit hole. Uh, for more episodes of this show, you can always find them on our website, norestoftheweekendpodcast.com. You can also uh, subscribe to us on all the major podcast channels. Uh, please do give us a like, rate, and uh, subscribe there. Uh, once again, I just want to thank my guest, Frank Fernandez. Thanks for coming down. Thank you. And uh, for Behind the Rod Productions, I'm Jason Godby. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.